Hi everyone, Aki Kareem here. Used to doing interviews for the BBTV boxing channel, but today uh, I am doing something for the Black Flash boxing channel, and I'm delighted to be here with Pat Barrett, former British and European champion. Pat, it's good to see you. How are we doing, Aki? You okay? So we're talking about basically today. We're talking about what you're what you're uh, doing with the fighters. I see that you're you're really picking up some speed here with the, the management side of things and. You've also announced a show we'll talk about in a second, but but firstly, you know, you're signing up fighters. Um, are you enjoying that side of the game? Um, I think what I have done now, I think I've learned a different side of boxing now with, um, with what I've done with Zelfa and Lyndon and uh, the platform that promoting gives and getting fighters on shows now. Um, so it's not just about signing them up, really. I'm not just signing them up because I want to. I'm signing up fighters what I think I can give a career. Um, basically, they have to do their side of the job, keep winning. Um, I'll give them so many fights. We agree to it. We have a plan. Um, and if they like the plan, what I'm going to give them, we work to that plan. And if it all goes well, then they've got a career at the end of it. Mm. I mean, you, you've got a, the setup over there at the gym where you've got a lot of things in house. So I suppose probably. Why would you bring the extra stress then on yourself and have, and managing fighters that you, that you don't train and, aren't, and and are in the gym? I don't consider it a stress, you know, really, because I don't get to do the hard work and the half of the hard work is training them, preparing them, educating them on towards what they have to do when they turn pro. No, I just have to manage them and promote them. And part of the, the managing comes last. The promoting comes first and the promoting comes first by getting them the fights, getting them out there, Building them a good steady record, um, you know. Hopefully it's, it's zero zero, so it's like you know, it might be five and zero, oh, six and zero, oh, seven and zero. Oh. When I feel that I've took them to the level where I feel they need different kind of exposure, then obviously with the relationship that I've got with uh, Queensbury and Frank and with Zelf and sorry with Lyndon being where he is in that situation, then we can obviously go forward. Um, and sit down and make a deal for these next generation of fighters. Mm, yeah, the next generation. I mean, I know that I know the lads from your gym there, and there's a lot of talented young lads. But you've you've also we'll talk about them in a second. But you've got you've got some new signings, haven't you? Um, to that you've taken into the fold. Can you tell us a little bit about these these the new yeah, signings? I mean, I, I mean, there was there was a, there was an heavyweight from Newcastle that I thought was a good kid. Um, I go back, I know his trainer very well because Mark Gazelle, we was going to do some work in Newcastle putting shows on before. And he's got a good stable of fighters himself, Mark Gazelle. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, there's, there's, there isn't nobody doing nothing in the North East for some reason. And it's a shame, really, because there's a lot of great fighters coming out of the North East and um, they're just not getting that same opportunity. Um, and I phoned Mark and I said, look, what's going on with this every week that you've got, Mark? You know, we sat down, I asked him to come to Manchester, come to the office, we sat down, we put something together. He liked what I put together for his fighter. Um, and the fighter liked what, what we said we was gonna do and they've come down and they signed with us and, you know, they're out on the first show. Now, I actually know this heavyweight you're talking about, Steve Robinson, uh, or oh, his nickname is USSR because he yeah. looks like Ivan Drago, you know, from uh, Rocky. That's right, yeah, he does actually. He does. I, I remember meeting him at, um, Peter Fury's gym, he was sparring, doing sparring with Yui that day. A uh, really top guy, a uh, nice guy, but he can also bang and he, you know, he's an exciting heavyweight. So nice for you to have a, a heavyweight as well. That's just the glamour division, I suppose, isn't it? Uh, I mean, if you've got a good heavyweight and you can give them a good plan and you don't let nobody dictate to how they're going to go, you just stay tunnel vision and you focus on this plan, then, you know, you've, you've got a world beater because most of these heavyweights, People want to push them too quick and they want them to achieve so many things so fast. But bear this in mind, they're still learning the game um, and they've still got to have an apprenticeship. And I mean, if I can take them 8-0, and all, yeah, and I think that's the best I can do with them, then I think when they're ready for the exposure and really letting them know what they can do and without chasing titles, you know, get them up to like 15-0 and all, and then you can say, this kid's ready to fight for the title. Mm. So I mean, because they've learnt the trade, they've got the experience, they've not been rushed, and if it, if they're not going to do it, then they never will. And the ethos of of the way you train as a as a as a trainer, as a as a teacher of boxing is is defense first. With with a heavyweight, it's one punch and it's over. 
That's you know? true. So is that a bit exciting, a bit, you know, the, the little bit of risk as well that's going to be involved? Well, there's always going to be that risk because even if this so-called fight in the journeyman, it only takes one swing to land and like you say, it's over. Um, so, yeah, it is, it is very much of a risk. But then as an heavyweight, like you see in the Steve Robinson, he's a smart boxer. He's intelligent. He's an ABA semi-finalist. Um, you know, he's done a lot as an amateur. So, I back him me. I mean, you don't have to win, necessarily have to win amateur titles to say you're going to be great. Because, um, I mean, I've had fighters, like, including like myself, didn't achieve anything as an amateur, but went on to do great things. Yeah. Um, you know, and then yeah. you've got Lyndon, that's done a lot of as an, as an amateur, including boxing for England, and still doing great things. You know yeah. what I mean? Then you've got Zelfa, who did nothing as an amateur, and then has gone on to do great things. You know what I mean? So, it's, it's just how you bring a fighter along at the end of the day, as a promoter, as a trainer, and as a manager. Mm. Them days are done where you're seeing people um, guiding a fighter and bringing them up properly and taking the time, nurturing them to the top. And I don't mean nurturing like giving them a padded career, but making sure that they've got the experience that like every fight that they have is a learning fight. You know what I mean? Like if they've got a good job, this, this opponent, they're going to be working on this, then they're going to be working on body shots. So you, you're creating them as you're going along. You're not just putting them in to bomb guys out. You know what I mean? Every knockout they have, they, they've created it. They've, or they've set it up, or they've, they've actually done it. They've not just gone in there and it's all down to expectations. Yeah. And there's someone else as well you mentioned to me earlier. You you, you rate him as a, as a fighter, a light heavyweight. Uh, what, what's his name? Yeah, Jordan Wizard. Um, very good kid, very strong. Um, in, you know, he's going to be an exciting fighter. He's got a lot to bring to the table. Wizard, is it spelled like wizard? Yeah. Hey, you need to call him Jordan the Wizard Wizard. That's you know it, you know? That's a very good nickname for him, that. Because there's a lot of magic he's got to bring. Yeah. Yeah. Then we've got the um, is it CJ Ch Chamber? CJ CJ Challenger. CJ yeah, Challenger that's right. from, from Leicester. Uh, from Leicester. From, from Hodges, I mean, Leicester. what I like about CJ is he's been at the top level and he's boxed at the high level and he knows to reinvent his career he's got to come back down to these small law shows and he's prepared to do that and he's looking to get four and all and then probably a title fight with us some like the title. And then go back on to go on to great things. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, so you know, these are good, exciting fighters that I've got. I mean, he's he's, he's ten and zero. Yeah. The heavyweight's three and zero. Mm. You know what I mean? He's um, there's another kid that I've got, Giorgio. Um, he's come from London. He's trained by um, Steve Maylett. He's yeah. from um, sorry, from good gym. Yeah. You know, you can see he's a lightweight, and you can see if he wasn't any good. He wouldn't be where he's at. And you can mm. see he's another good prospect. The only thing with him, he can't sell tickets. But there's ways of dealing with that. Do you know what I mean? We can put him on a busy card mm. where sometimes it's not all about what they can do because I know where he's going to go. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm, it's it's um, good moments at the moment for me. Yeah. It's enjoyable moments. Yeah. Actually, you mentioned um, Steve Maylitz, Jim, there. Terry Flanagan, another one with with a very limited, or he didn't do great in the amateurs, went on to become world champion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, now you, you've just you talked there about these different trainers who are who are who are happy to have the fighters that are, you know, going to be coming and, and, and boxing on your shows. That must show a lot of trust as well that you you know you've developed something worth them putting their fighters on your shows. You know what I mean? That must be nice to, to know that as well. I mean, it, it is really. I mean, you know, I think what I've got now in the boxing game, and I've just really got it really, and I've got the respect for what I do. I mean, I, I consider myself, I've always been a good trainer, um, but um, a lot of people have had their own views and different ways. And I think it changed a lot when people seen what Lyndon did with, um, when in, the, in, the, in his last fight. And to me, you know, is what I'm trying to say is I've always made sure that every fight that we've had has been a learning fight. It's been a stepping stone to get where you want to get. I wouldn't want Lyndon just to go in the ring and just tear away and knock a guy out. He's, he's had to create, he's had to come off the jab, what he does best. Same with Zelfa, he's had, he's, had, he's had to create things and open doors. And we've, we've seen what happens with, with fighters when they expect knockouts. They don't get them. Um, and sometimes it's down to me, it's like having an overgrown garden. You have to trim it to make it look good. So I have to go back to the drawing board and sit Zelfa down and say, look Zelfa, you've got to remember one thing. Every knockout that you've had, it's been intelligent. You've created it. We need to go back to doing that. And you go, oh yeah, okay, Uncle Pat. That's what we need to do then, right? We'll go in the gym and we'll, 
and we start all over again because I have to reproduce that. And it's like resetting his mind and mm. getting him to realize, look, you're not Mike Tyson, you're not that kind. You set punches up, you set knockouts up. That's what you do. Don't go looking for them, son, because you go looking for them, you're not going to get them. Mm. Yeah, and this is what we all have to remember. So we're all read, uh, singing up the same hymn sheet. All my boxers in my gym know that, hey, we're not just going to be like going for them. They learn now to be more of an intelligent fighter. And what they do is they go out to create what they do. Their, pro their performances are all created from their own ability. Mm. That sounds great to me. And um, you, you've also, some uh, exciting news anyway, with, with, with your show that you've announced, July the 24th yeah. at the Victoria Warehouse. I mean, I was buzzing. I'm, I'm, I've been waiting for Small Lord to come back. I know there's some, some of the promoters are thinking of getting, the, getting things going again. That's a, still a bit daring because it's not too far off the supposed uh, end of restrictions, but you've gone ahead with it anyway. Um, how excited are you to be, be able to put on a show? I'm not, it's not excited for me. I'm more excited for the boxes that we've had over these pandemic moments. who has been in the gym every day and just waiting for it to happen. And, you know, I've got to give credit where credit's due. They've, they've never had the time out as much as they could have said, oh, we don't need, they've, 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 they've took the best out of a worse situation. And they stayed in the gym learning and adding to what they they wouldn't have time to be able to do if it was if it was up at all. Everything happens for a reason, really. And um, we're just like a bird that's made a nest and waiting for these eggs to drop. We've just been ready for this moment to be over. Now it's been lifted. It's like we can just we've been we planned out we're going to do the show. In the meantime, we've been able to set the channel up. We've we've been able to set the offices up. We'll be able to set all the new things up what we would never have done before because it's given us all that time that year to work on things that I would have had to do in between doing shows and training fighters. I was able to train fighters and then keep myself occupied and, you know, do all this and we're here now and this show to me is going to be a good show and, you know, we've already got us, um, our VIP table sold out, which is a good thing. Um, I mean, that's what we what we called help to sponsor the own event because when them tables been sold, it, it nearly covers the cost of the show, which is a good thing really. I mean, where before we would we would be struggling like hell, and you know, thanks to a lot of people that have bought the tickets and that has helped us and stayed with us still in, even throughout these moments. Yeah, gotta give a big shout out to any sponsors that have kept on sponsoring shows, boxes throughout this pandemic. Um, Tell us a bit about, you've got lots of debuts on that card, uh, particularly in-house debuts, which I'm really excited about seeing. Uh, the, the, the young lads, I've seen them develop and grow in confidence. Um, that would probably be quite a proud, I know obviously the boxing's got to be the focus, but it'd probably be quite a proud day for you, wouldn't it, seeing a lot of these fighters turning over, making their pro debuts that you've had on the I mean, We call it the next generation. I mean, the reason why I call it the next generation is like, we've had Zelfa, Lyndon, we used to have Chris Monaghan, we used to have... Uh, Matty Ryan. Uh, Matty Ryan. We had uh, uh, Ben Mulligan. Yeah. We had a lot of fighters before them, but were good fighters, yeah. Whatever happens, however it turns out, we had Delph and Linden out of that bunch, and they went on to do great things. And then we've got a next generation of fighters that we're going to be bringing through, that you're going to be seeing them all. Mm. Um, and when you've seen all this next generation without mentioning no names, because if I start mentioning names, and if you follow the social media, you'll see who they are, you know, on the Instagram and the... Um, you know, you follow the uh, Black Flash Boxing channel, you'll know who they are. So right, without me saying who they are, I'd like people to do their own research and come out and support them because they are good kids. And they are what we say they are, the next generation of fighters. Um, so yeah, we've got like, I think we've got about four kids making a debut on that show. Mm. And not just the new signings, new signings as well, sorry. Mm. As well as my own fighters. Small Hall's coming back, people. Small Hall. Support Small Hall shows. Yeah, because that's funny enough, yeah. I mean, I think people start supporting it a lot more now. I mean, this this, this um, COVID situation has is, is made people realise a lot that um, Small Hall shows are not as bad as what people used to say. Nobody wanted to go. Everyone wanted to see about the big shows and when the big shows were going on. But real and truly, small can be big. It's just how you look at it. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> now, they may or may not edit it. I'm not in charge of the editing, so I don't know if they're going to edit that out. They might not. No, that won't be getting edited out. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you. <laughs>
But yeah, no, you're right though. Uh, uh, I think this period of time we've had with the pandemic has really reinforced the fact that we need the small all. We need the promoters like yourself. We need the, the people who are willing to invest at, at, at the ground level and be the feeders to these bigger shows because that's, that's where it all starts, isn't it, at the end of the day? You know what? I'm going to tell you something now. Okay. Small all gets overlooked. Yeah. It's what I'm trying to say. Say, for instance, Lyndon, please, Lord, it doesn't, it would never happen. But if it was, just say Lyndon would have lost that fight against Sean. Just say he would have done. Yeah. And, um, I would have just said to Lyndon, look, it is how it is. You still got to be proud. You're still there. Never got to do it. But this is where we've got to go back. We have to go back to the beginning. Back to the beginning is back to basics. Back to basics is you can wait to get on a TV show and you just get thrown in the mix. Or you can get the ring rust off mm. and then get thrown in the mix. So sometimes you have to swallow your pride and come back down to the beginning mm. and then pick yourself up and then start again. I mean, Zelfa did that when he got beat off Clark. Mm. and he boxed again on our show yeah. and then he boxed Leon Woodstock and then ever since from there it's never been a backward step mm -hmm. so sometimes yeah, it's, there's no way and it isn't a bad thing coming back down to these small old shows it makes you open your eyes because the same people you meet on the way up are going to be the same people you meet on the way down so don't overlook it and don't judge it and don't ever think you're better than small all because mm -hmm. this is where you started I mean, you learnt your trade here and where you got recognised and how you got to the top it was from the bottom. Yeah, 100%. I, I, and I, I love the small lot and I'm so glad it's coming back. Um, is there anything that I missed out, Pat, that you feel like you wanted to uh, mention today? Nah, I'm just, like I said, I'm in a, I'm in, we're in a far more happier place. Like we said, this is just one of many that we're going to be doing and um, we're just glad that we can get the ball rolling again. Um, getting these new lot of kids out. Um, uh, exciting times, um, creating different avenues with different fighters that I'm managing and rather than training. And so it's it's just an all different look for me. Um, being able to promote them and give them a career and knowing that they're getting these fights under us, it's, you know, it's all a challenge for me, really. I mean, I have to live up to what I say and live up to an expectation of making um, plans for these kids and seeing that I can carry them out. And I think if I did it before with nothing, I can do it a lot more where I've got something. So, As always, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. I wish you the best of luck in preparations for the show, uh, your new signings, your crop of lads you've got in the gym. And uh, we'll catch up again soon, I'm sure. Thank you.